going to do a quick tour around the world and tell you a few things that might be surprising to you that we found out about technology and how people are using it in different countries. Surprising to us as well. How do we find, find out what we know? We go around the world, we talk to people. This is an interview we did in Bangladesh earlier this year and there's no substitute for sitting down with people and asking them what they have in their homes uh, and how they use that technology. Uh, and the fun thing about the work we do is there are always surprises. When you do research, you find things you didn't expect uh, about what people have, how they use it, and so on, as you can see in this uh, picture, not one that we took. But as a result, in the, in the immortal words of Yogi Berra, uh, we never make predictions, especially about the future, because you never know what you're going to find. Uh, turning to some of the, the interesting things that we've found happening in the world, why, why is there a goat up here? Well, this is the, the deal of the week on Cell Bazaar. Uh, in Bangladesh, this is an eBay-like uh, exchange, buyers and sellers who can use their mobile phones uh, to exchange goods and services. Five million people doing this in Bangladesh today. This goat, by the way, is still available, 40,000 Bangladeshi taka, if there are any takers in the audience. A little bit to the east in Vietnam, uh, big uh, web-using society, uh, asking young Vietnamese web users how they get information. 55% of them said they use the internet as their primary source of information. Only 14% said they use TV to get information. Almost as many said they use mobiles, 11%. So how, how do we reach these people? Well, the answer is obvious there. In Indonesia, uh, a market where uh, internet cafes were the primary initial means of access to the internet for most Indonesians, the mobile market has taken off uh, enormously in recent years, and now half of all access to the internet in Indonesia is taking place on mobile phones. Moving to Africa, Zimbabwe, a country that has been racked by political dissension, uh, economically in, in disastrous position, but in spite of all of these things, the ownership of mobile phones has tripled in the past three years uh, to just shy of 60% today, uh, a tr tremendously important means of communication now among people in Zimbabwe. But all is not equal in Africa. If we look around the continent, uh, the price of one kilogram of cooking oil in Egypt will buy you 48 minutes of airtime, and in Morocco only two and a half minutes of airtime. So there's a big difference in different African countries as to how accessible mobile is uh, and to how expensive it is for people to, uh, to use that, uh, that technology for communication. Okay, enough facts for the moment. Here's a quiz. 12 African capitals on the right. Which one has the second highest rate of internet usage? The answer is Mogadishu, perhaps unexpected. Quiz number two, a dozen countries on the right. Which of these countries has the highest rate of internet use? Which has the lowest? I hear no answers from the audience. Highest is Macedonia. The lowest is Pakistan. Okay, a few more tidbits. Bahrain, we know, is a well-wired environment. Uh, perhaps uh, more than people think here. Twice as many mobile phone subscriptions as people in Bahrain and one and a half times as many broadband subscriptions uh, as there are people there. So when things heat up, uh, you know how communication is going to take place in that country. Uh, in China, uh, looking at young Chinese under the age of 30, not the fellow on the right, 3% uh, of these people listen to the radio on an average day, but 38% of them use the internet. Again, if we're trying to reach the gentleman on the right, maybe internet's not the way to do it, but young people, that's certainly the way to get to them. In Saudi Arabia, a pretty amazing fact, I thought 46% of adults in Saudi Arabia tell us they go on Facebook every week. Think about that. But don't always believe the hype. Old media are not dead everywhere, certainly not yet. We've heard a lot about the Twitter revolution throughout uh, the Middle East and, and, and uh, even in Iran, but uh, the, the research that we've done there suggests that fewer than 1% of Iranians actually are using Twitter, whereas 30% watch satellite TV. And there are a lot of people around the world, like this gentleman in Cambodia on the left, who still cling tenaciously to their radios. So in Burma, Afghanistan, Nigeria, more than a third of the population listen to shortwave radio every day. Thank you. <laughs>